Now, I probably don't need to tell you this, but a problem that most of us face in our daily lives is how to manage the extreme pressures and temperatures that our rockets use to produce thrust. Now, the pressure's pretty high, but the temperatures can be ridiculous, like high enough to melt tungsten sometimes. So if you want that rocket to run for any length of time, you need a way of removing that heat. In a previous video, I made a film-cooled rocket engine, which is basically a 2-liter bottle with alcohol running down the inside of it to protect it from the heat of combustion. And it worked pretty well until, until it didn't, and then you guys had some good ideas on how to improve it. So in this video, I want to talk more generally about how rocket engines are cooled using some spooky thermodynamics, and then I'm also going to try and apply that by using a pumpkin as a rocket engine, if, if I can. It might just pop. It, I hope it pops. <laughs> In my last video, the rockets would fail whenever the film cooling was interrupted, either by being evaporated or blown away. This left the bottle exposed directly to the heat of combustion, meaning that it melted in a hurry. Now, by far the most common solution that you guys suggested was to also cool the outside of the bottle. Now, I like this idea a lot because it sounds like regenerative cooling, which is something that a lot of modern rockets do, where they pass the liquid fuel through a jacket that surrounds the rocket. This keeps the rocket cool and preheats the fuel. And to look closer at this idea, we're going to have to dip our toes into the deep, dark, scary depths of thermodynamics and heat transfer. Something that I think is fun to think about, and also hopefully a good introduction into thermodynamics and heat transfer, is the feels like weather conditions on your weather app. It's basically telling you that when you step outside on a cold day, you're not really feeling the temperature of the air, you're kind of feeling your heat loss to the environment. Let's say it's a calm 55 degree day. The heat from the goop and stuff inside of your body is carried to your skin by your blood using convection, which is just how heat is transported by moving fluids and gases. From there, the heat travels through your skin by conduction, which is how heat travels through solids. And finally, the heat is taken away by the air, which kind of just heats up and wafts away with natural convection. How quickly that heat moves is dependent on what the material is, the temperature differential, and for fluids and gases, how quickly and how they are moving. So for example, let's say our calm day just turns a little windy. The air that was going through natural convection is now being forced past your skin, carrying away heat more effectively. So it feels colder, even though it's that same 55 degrees freedom height. So now hopefully conduction and convection mean something to you, and you have somewhat of an idea about how heat moves through a system. So in the last video, we have the wall of the bottle, and we protect it with a film of fuel. The heat of combustion is dumped into that film, and some of it is removed by the convection, but mostly the heat is removed by evaporation. And so long as the inside wall of that bottle is wet, it should never reach a temperature greater than the boiling point of the film. But if you watched that video, it definitely dried out and melted slash blew up. So the new suggestion is kind of film cooling plus regenerative cooling. The regenerative cooling won't really stop the film cooling from being interrupted, either by being blown away or being evaporated, so we're really just kind of looking at regenerative cooling. The idea is that the cooling on the outside of the bottle will remove enough heat to keep the bottle from burning and or melting. And you can kind of test this by using a lighter and just sticking it to a bottle full of water. The bottle starts to melt a little bit and deform, which isn't a great sign for this working, but it doesn't just start bubbling or catching on fire like it would if it was empty. The reason the bottle melted instead of dumping all that heat into the water is because it has a poor thermal conductivity. So if it was something like copper, which is very thermally conductive, then it would be able to dump a lot more heat into the water and keep the surface of the bottle colder. And if we use something closer to the temperature of the combustion chamber, like this little torch, it actually does manage to burn holes through the plastic. So I might like the idea, but I don't think it would work out practically. And speaking of not working out practically, there is another method of cooling that might be fun to try, and that is ablative cooling. This relies on a sacrificial material known as an ablator that'll burn or decompose away under high heat. Some of that heat is then removed by the vapor from the decomposing ablator, and the char that is left behind after decomposition and the ablator that's yet to be touched also both have very low thermal conductivity, meaning that they're not likely to pass a lot of heat into the structure that they're protecting. The most famous example would probably be the heat shielding on a lot of re-entry vehicles used for space travel. But in this case, we're going to see if we can't make a pumpkin do something similar. 
The biggest problem that I see is that a pumpkin is mostly water, so instead of ablating, it's gonna kind of boil, and that steam could cool things down a little too much and mess with the chemistry of the rocket. But I'm gonna try anyway, because what is there to lose? A, a pumpkin? <laughs> And it'll probably be easy to do, because I'll just throw threads onto a rocket injector that I already designed to use air and alcohol as fuel, and just throw it into a pumpkin and drill a hole for a nozzle. Alright, it's time to test it. So clearly just hoping the lid stays on isn't enough, but tape should fix it, right? So that didn't work, but I guess let's just try with another pumpkin and make the lid a lot smaller, that way there's less area for that pressure to act on. Clearly, I should just be using stronger tape. So at this point, short of like nailing the lid down, which I think makes it unnecessarily similar to a claymore, I think I just need to turn down the pressure, which means it probably won't operate like a normal rocket, more like a pulse jet, like a really slow pulse jet. Now, if it's not clear from the audio, these things are super, super loud, and probably annoying too to my neighbors, like a hundred YouTubers out their windows saying, hey, you should like, share, and subscribe, like, over and over. But I mean, not me, I'd maybe drop a comment saying your neighbors are cool or something, I, I don't know. But speaking of cool, I can't pass up the opportunity to make a rocket jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> Well, technically, I guess third degree burns would be pretty scary, but I think I'm gonna keep this away from trick-or-treaters. And while some of these pumpkins fired for quite a while, there is almost no real damage to the insides of them. There's just a little bit of charring on the bits I didn't totally clean off. An unofficial goal of this channel, besides me doing whatever I want with engineering, because I will clearly do anything, but also to make a cheap liquid fuel rocket engine out of more relatable materials, because I mean, anybody could really make a rocket engine if they have the time to learn about it and machine it out of high quality materials, but making it out of a two liter bottle takes a special kind of stupid that I think is really fun. So if you have any ideas, just let me know in the comments and I might try some of them, who knows? I might make another stupid robot too, who knows? But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, do all the stuff that makes the algorithm happy.